What is up guys? I'm Bethany. I'm one half of the movie Buff Pains and today I'm going to do a little solo video for you guys. Um, this has been a highly requested video um, to see my Scream Factory collection, which you can probably see behind me. I've been collecting Scream Factory probably longer than any of the labels that I own. Um, it was kind of my way of getting into collecting. Um, I've really enjoyed their titles. Of course, you know, as with all labels, they have their pros and they have their cons. But overall, I would say I really, really enjoy Scream Factory and everything they put out. And they're constantly exposing me to new horror films that I otherwise wouldn't have seen. This video is probably going to be pretty long. So just warning you up front, I'm not going to say a lot about each title. Of course, I'll talk about some of my favorites. Um, and another warning, I have not seen everything that is in my Scream Factory collection. Uh, I try to watch them pretty regularly you know, at least one or two a month that I've never seen before. My eventual goal is to own all of the Scream Factory titles. It's been, it's become a little harder. Um, their prices have gone up a bit in the last year or two, uh, but I'm still trying. I always try to keep up with the uh, collector's editions with slip covers. Uh, that's probably my favorite part to collect. But I do like to watch all of their titles, obscure, well-known, whatever, whatever it may be. I really enjoy watching Scream Factory movies. Uh, you'll probably see some of the, the rows disappear behind me as I pull them off the shelf. Uh, but hang in there, guys. I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, like and subscribe if you do. I really appreciate you guys being here. The first step, I thought I would go ahead and show you guys um, my box sets and a couple of the special editions. This is one of the first things that I picked up um, from Scream Factory way back when, when I started collecting them. And that is the 10 disc set of Halloween the Complete Collection. This was about $40 at Walmart. And you know, it was just one of the gateways into Scream Factory. Halloween's always been one of my favorite films. Always loved it. Probably the movie that got me into horror. And I had that set for quite a while. And then a few years ago at a pawn shop, I found uh, the deluxe edition, which is the 15 disc complete collection. Um, it's not in perfect condition, but I was really happy to find it because it had been it had been out of print for quite some time um, when I found it. So it's pretty cool to find. And I, I really like having individual cases for movies. Um, I just think they look better that way. Uh, this one's my newest box set pickup, and that's the Fly Collection. I have the Omen Collection. They've really been doing a great job. Uh, with their box sets recently. They're, you know, they're hard boxes. They, they just look great. We have the Critters Collection. Those are, of course, fun movies. The Record Collection, a uh, little bit more of modern horror for Scream Factory. Uh, these are really, really entertaining films. I saw Quarantine first, but uh, the original, of course, is better. We have the It's Alive trilogy from uh, Larry Cohen. I know he did the first one, at least. Um, and I've only seen the first one, and it's exactly what you would expect from a Larry Cohen film. And this was one of their earlier box sets that they did, and that's the Amityville Horror Trilogy. Which, of course, the original Amityville is an absolute classic. Um, and then these next two, um, they're not uh, film box sets, but they're kind of special editions of individual films. First one is Nightbreed. This is the director's cut, limited edition. I also have just the regular edition as well. I got really lucky with this one. I found it at Hamilton Book. It was like, I wanna say it was like $25. And you know, it had been long sold out. I got really lucky finding it on that website. And then we have Creepshow, which is another absolute classic. So those are all my box sets. So we'll go ahead and uh, dive into my non-slip cover titles next. All right, so I pulled a whole shelf of Blu-rays off to show you guys, so we'll go ahead and dive right into it. Um, I actually decided I'm gonna show you my steelbooks real quick. I don't have all the steelbooks they've released. I've just tried to pick up the ones that have uh, like new 4K scans or ones that I just thought looked really cool. First one is Halloween 2, which is probably my favorite Halloween sequel. I always have a soft spot in my heart for this film. Uh, I watched it a lot when I was little. I, I just really, really love Halloween 2. Um, and then we've got Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, which is another really underrated Halloween film. I think you kind of have to think of it outside of the context of, you know, the Michael Myers world 
And if you do, if you just kind of treat it as its own horror film, it's actually really great. Um, and then we got Humanoids from the Deep, really fun uh, Roger Corman film. And we got Life Force, the pretty entertaining film. Night of the Demons, which this is one of my absolute favorite Scream Factory titles. I, I don't know why, I just love like the demon subgenre. It's so much fun. Uh, you, you always get lots of gore, uh, just lots of 80s campy fun. And this one is no exception. This is a great film. And then we got Piranha, another Roger Corman produced film. Um, this one's all right. I, I honestly think the remake might be a little more entertaining, but you know, this one is a classic in its own right. I haven't even opened this one yet. Uh, the Slumber Party Massacre. I have seen this film though. A uh, very enjoyable slasher, uh, lots of fun. And then last steel book that I have is, of course, John Carpenter's The Thing. Which, what can I say about The Thing that hasn't been said before? This is a all-time classic, just an absolutely fantastic film. All right, so now we'll go ahead and dive into my non-slipcover editions. Uh, this is just how I have it arranged on the shelf, so I thought I'd go ahead and go through them this way. Um, first up, we have The Abandoned, After Midnight which this is a, a great horror anthology. And then we have Alienator, and The Ambulance, a Larry Cohen film. I, I think I have a soft spot for Larry Cohen, to be honest, I just, I find all of his films to be really enjoyable, even his lesser films. American Gothic, another fun one. Anti-Birth, haven't seen this one yet, but I've been interested in it because I really like um, Natasha Lyonne. Then we have Attack of the Puppet People, um, the Axe Murders of Velissa, Velisha, I'm probably saying that wrong. Uh, and then we have a double pack of Bad Dreams and Visiting Hours. Really like these double packs that Screen Factory puts out. Uh, and then we have Bad Moon. This one's been on my watch list for a while. I'll definitely watch this one soon. I've heard it's a, a great uh, werewolf film. And we got Baskin. And then we have The Bat People. Uh, another double pack, Blackula and Scream, Blackula Scream, classic black exploitation right there. The Beast Within, and Ben, which is the sequel to Willard. Can't remember if I've watched this one yet or not. I did watch Willard though, and I enjoyed that one. Um, Beyond the Gates, underrated IFC Midnight film. Uh, it's got Barbara Crampton in it. Really enjoyable one. Uh, then we have The Binding. And we have Blood and Lace. Body Parts, which this is a fairly recent release. This has Jeff Fahey uh, from The Lawnmower Man in it. I watched this one. I really enjoyed this film. These 90s horror films, I don't know why, but I have like a soft spot for them and I just really enjoy them. I, I found this one to be highly entertaining. Uh, then we have Bones. I just picked this one up. Uh, Bound to Vengeance. Um, and then we have The Brain. Really fun one. Brain Scan. Another really fun one. This one's got Edward Furlong. Another one of those 90s horror films that just, you know, it, it's just right up my alley. <laughs> and I, I like um, horror that kind of plays off technology. I think it's really fun. And then we have The Bride, which stars Sting. I haven't watched this one yet, but definitely interested in seeing that one. Next we have Caged Fury, which I believe is like a, a women in prison film. Uh, Candyman, Farewell to the Flesh, uh, another double pack, this is Carrie and the Rage Carrie 2. Uh, so Carrie, this one is just a remake from 2002. The Rage Carrie 2 is uh, from 1999 and I believe it's supposed to be a direct sequel to Brian De Palma's. I haven't seen either of those yet. Uh, another double pack, we have Cellar Dweller and Catacombs. I have Cherry Falls. I really like early 2000s slashers, and this one's no exception. Uh, got a great cast, Brittany Murphy, Jay Moore. Really fun film. Uh, and then we have Chilling Visions, Five Senses of Fear. Uh, I believe these are short films. I haven't gotten a chance to watch those yet. Next up, we have The Chosen. Uh, then we have Contracted Phase 2, The Crawlers, which I believe is also known as, let's see, Contamination point seven, and then we have Crawl Space, and we have Crucible of Horror. Uh, next we have The Crush. Really, really like this film. Alicia Silverstone, um, just a great uh, 90s erotic thriller. We have The Curse and Curse to the Bite. 
The Curse of the Cat People, um, Dance Macabre with uh, Robert England, Dark Angel, The Dark Half, the Stephen King film, Dark Man 2, The Return of Durant. I haven't seen this one, I've seen the original though. And then we have Dark Man 3, Die Dark Man Die. Uh, and this has Jeff Fahey, who I really like. Uh, Daughters of Satan, Dead of Winter, Deadly Eyes, and then we have Dead Time Stories, another really fun anthology film. Next we have Death Valley, uh, Death Stalker and Death Stalker 2, which I was pretty sure I was never going to get, uh, but then Shout Factory decided to go ahead and uh, repress it, which is kind of annoying for people that, you know, had the original pressing, but I'm happy because I, I didn't think I'd ever be able to find this one for my collection. Then we have Demented, Depraved, Destroyer and Edge of Sanity, The Devil's Candy, sure, I really need to watch this one. I, this one looks right up my alley. Die, Monster, Die, Boris Karloff film. Uh, Disturbing Behavior, uh, which is a great uh, like faculty era uh, sci-fi horror. It's got James Marsden, Katie Holmes, and Nick Stahl which I really like this and The Faculty. The Doctor and the Devils, Doctor Blood's Coffin, The Dungeon Master and Eliminators, Ejecta, and we have Empire of the Ants and Jaws of Satan. I've seen Empire of the Ants, that's a, that's a fun creature feature. Um, the Evictors, The Evil, just watched this one recently, a really good uh, haunted house film. Then we have Evil Speak, um, Eliminators of the Year 3000, Eye of the Cat, which you know I'm down for anything horror with cats, <laughs> uh, The Fan, really looking forward to checking this one out, picked it up recently, it's a highly awaited slasher to come to Blu-ray, so definitely looking forward to this one. Uh, Fangs of the Living Dead, Final Exam, this is probably one of my favorite um, underrated slashers, it's just a really good film, uh, it kind of takes some different turns than a lot of 80s slashers, so uh, well worth a look. The Final Terror. And actually I could say just about the same thing for this one. This is a really underrated slasher that I really enjoyed. And then we have The Food of the Gods and Frogs. And then The Four Skulls of Jonathan Drake. From a Whisper to a Scream. Which this one has Vincent Price and you just can't go wrong with him. Full Moon High. This one, this one was okay. It was really much more of a comedy than horror. Not even, I wouldn't even call it a horror comedy. Uh, the Funhouse Massacre. This one's been on my watch list for a while. I'll have to get to this one pretty soon. Gate 2, which I've seen The Gate. Really like that one, so I'll have to watch this one soon as well. Ghost Story, Ghost Town, Ghost House and Witchery. We have Ghoulies and Ghoulies 2. We have Grave of the Vampire, The Guardian, a William Friedkin film, and Hellhole. All right, next up we have Hashtag Horror, uh, The House That Dripped Blood, the House That Screamed, which I think this is a really underrated release from Screen Factory. I highly recommend checking this one out. Just, just a really, really good film. We have The House Where Evil Dwells and Ghost Warrior. We have The Housemaid, Howling 2, I, Madman, I Remember You, and I Saw What You Did, starring Joan Crawford. The Incredible Melting Man, and Invaders from Mars. Toby Hooper film, really like this one. Invasion of the Bee Girls, The Island, Island of Terror, uh, another really underrated film. Has Peter Cushing, who I just absolutely love. He's a great horror actor. Uh, next up is Jack's Back with James Spader, uh, another one of my absolute favorite Screen Factory releases. I don't hear that many people talk about this one. It's more of like a, a modern day take on Jack the Ripper. And I just absolutely love um, James Spader, uh, Killing Ground, Lady in White, just an absolute classic ghost story, The Legacy, and again, any anything with a cat and horror, I will watch. The Legend of Hell House, and Let's Scare Jessica to Death, which I'm so happy that Screen Factory gave this one a Blu-ray release. This is a fantastic film. I watched it probably about a year ago on DVD, and then they announced this, so I was really excited. Leviathan, Love at First Bite, and uh, Once Bitten, which I haven't seen Love at First Bite yet, but I watched Once Bitten. 
So yeah, that one was entertaining. The Man from Planet X, Man's Best Friend with Ali Sheedy and Lance Henriksen, uh, The Manitou, The Manster, Half Man, Half Monster. This is a uh, Memoirs of an Invisible Man, which stars uh, Chevy Chase and uh, Daryl Hannah. Message from Space, Metamorphosis and Beyond Darkness, uh, Millennium and Rotor. And then we have Monkey Shines. Uh, we got the Munchies double feature. Um, we have Murders in the Rue Morgue and the Dunwich Horror, which I, I really enjoy the Dunwich Horror. Definitely recommend checking that one out. We have The Naked Cage. We have Naked Vengeance and Vendetta. We have The Nest. New Year's Evil, which is a, a really fun slasher to watch around New Year's. Night of the Lepus, a good little Easter horror films they're on. Night of the Seagulls, The Night of the Sorcerers and The Laura Lee's Grasp. Uh, William Castle's The Night Walker. Um, and then we have Nightmare at Noon, which I'm just now realizing is by Nico Mastarakis, so I definitely need to watch this. I, I like his films a lot. Nightmares, another horror anthology. Uh, Nomads, Nosferatu the Vampire. This is the Werner Herzog film of unknown origin. Um, this one's high on my watch list. I, I love Peter Weller and the, the premise just sounds really cool. Um, Our House. I really like Thomas Mann, The Outing and The Godsend, The Pack, um, this is the Robert England version of Phantom of the Opera, which it was, it was okay. I, there's just, there's too many versions of this film. <laughs> Piranha 2 The Spawning, which I, uh, I think James Cameron would rather didn't exist. I, I don't know. <laughs> I think this is James Cameron's directorial debut, if I'm not mistaken. Pledge. Uh, the, the Poughkeepsie Tapes. Uh, I really like this one. Really creepy, really disturbing. The Projected Man. I really like that Scream Factory has been going back and doing a little more uh, 50s and 60s horror. I feel like I'm always seeking out 70s and 80s horror, but more often than not, I don't watch enough 50s and 60s horror, so I've really appreciated them kind of digging those out of the vaults for us. Uh, we have Psycho 4, The Beginning, which of the Psycho sequels is easily the uh, the weakest. Uh, but this one, hardly, hardly worth your time, to be honest. And then we have the Psycho remake with Vince Vaughn, which I've never seen, and I've also heard is not good at all. So, I'll watch it one day. Uh, Pumpkinhead 2, Blood Wings. Uh, cue the Winged Serpent, another good old Larry Cohen film. A Quiet Place in the Country, Rabid Dogs, Ravenous, uh, which is a really cool underrated film, uh, The Resurrected. Now this one, another one of my absolute favorite Scream Factory releases. I don't know what it was about this film, but it just really resonated with me. I just thought it was really entertaining, really creepy, um, and I really like Chris Sarandon. I definitely recommend that one to you. The Return of Count Yorga. And then we have Road Games, uh, not to be confused with the Jamie Lee Curtis film. We have Robot Jocks, good old uh, Stuart Gordon film. We have Rockula, Sacrifice, Saturday the 14th. Uh, I watched this one recently. I think I actually watched it on Saturday the 14th. Uh, really silly movie, but lots of fun. And then we have Saturn 3, uh, Scanners 2, The New Order, and Scanners 3, The Takeover. I absolutely love Scanners, the original from David Cronenberg. Uh, have yet to watch these two though. Uh, Scarecrows, Scream for Help, uh, Screaming Skull, The Seduction, and we have The Sentinel. Um, and this one, put it right up there with Jack's Back to the Resurrected. Probably higher than those films actually. This is just one of my absolute favorite horror films. One of the best to come out of the 70s and it's not talked about nearly enough. Highly, highly recommend this film. We are to the last section of my non-slipcover Scream Factory, so let's go ahead and keep going. We have Session 9, which I hear a lot of people in the horror community praise. This is a great film, really legitimately scary. This is probably one of the few 
films I could say that actually really scared me. Uh, Sharkinsaw Women's Prison Massacre. <laughs> Probably one of the more ridiculous titles in the Scream Factory collection. Uh, I got this at the dollar store recently. Uh, then we have Shelly, which looks to be kind of like a, a Rosemary's Baby type film. Single White Female, which is a classic fun thriller uh, with Bridget Fonda and Jennifer Jason Lee. I definitely enjoy this one. Uh, we have The Slumber Party Massacre again. Uh, I have The Steel Book, but of course I just wanted to hang on to this one. I uh, really love this film. It's a fun, fun slasher. And then we have Slumber Party Massacre 2 and Slumber, Slumber Party Massacre 3. These films take uh, what the first film did and just make it way more over the top, <laughs> way more crazy. Uh, and they're just, they're equally as fun. They're, they're really fun sequels. Then we have John Carpenter's Someone's Watching Me. This is a really underrated John Carpenter film. Um, I enjoy this one quite a bit. It's pretty eerie, kind of creepy. And then we have Sunny Boy. And we have Species 2, which as you can see is still sealed. I've only seen the first Species, haven't seen this one. Um, I just thought it was going to be going out of print, so I picked that one up. And I, I believe it was the same story for uh, these ones. We have Species 3 and Species The Awakening, double set. The Spell. Uh, really like this one. Pretty underrated. I know I keep saying that, but um, it was made for TV back in the 70s. Um, but I, I like this one. It, it, it can hold its own. I mean, yeah, it is kind of a Carrie ripoff, but it's very enjoyable. <laughs> I don't even know how to say this one. It says, don't say it, hiss it. We got I just feel stupid even saying that title. Um, yeah, I haven't seen this one quite yet. Uh, then we have Stigmata, Straight Jacket, Strays. Again, Cats in Horror, gotta love it. I think I have a, a VHS tape of this film. Uh, Super Beast, and we have Supernova, uh, Superstition, Swamp Thing, um, a Wes Craven film. Definitely not his best, but still enjoyable. I, I want to check out the, the TV show sometime. We have Tales from the Crypt and Vault of Horror. And then we have Tentacles and Reptilicus. Uh, Terror Vision and The Video Dead. This this is one of the best double features that Scream Factory has put out. Time Walker. Time Bomb. The Tingler. Vincent Price film. The Town That Dreaded Sundown. Um, this one, I kind of went in with higher expectations than I think I should have. You know, it came out in 1977, so, you know, around the same time as a lot of the early slashers. But I, th I think I definitely want to go back and watch this one again because I was a little disappointed the first watch. But, you know, a lot of people say this one's a classic and um, I just didn't connect with it the first time I watched it. So definitely want to watch this one again. And then we have Troll and Troll 2. And then we have The Unborn. Up from the Depths. Uh, this one was okay. The Vagrant with Bill Paxton, The Vampire, The Vampire and the Ballerina, uh, The Vampire Lovers, which I just watched this one recently. It's a pr pretty decent flick, kind of a, a period piece vampire film. And then we have Vampire's Kiss and High Spirits. I, I can't speak to High Spirits because I've never seen it, but Vampire's Kiss is a lot of fun. Classic Nicolas Cage just being absolutely batshit crazy like we all love him to be. Yeah, there's that much more I could say about that other than just Nicolas Cage being crazy. Uh, the Velvet Vampire, another really underrated film. I always try to watch a film directed by a woman on International Women's Day and I remember watching this one and just being really blown away by how ahead of its time it was. This is a, a really enjoyable film. Uh, Vicious Lips, Virus, Jamie Lee Curtis, Warning Sign, Welcome to Willits, uh, What Keeps You Alive, uh, What's the Matter with Helen, pick this one up because of Debbie Reynolds, Willard, absolute classic, lots of fun, um, and then we have the remake of Willard with Crispin Glover, haven't seen this one quite yet, then we have Windows, then we have Witchboard, a uh, great film from Kevin Tenney, really like him. Uh, he also directed Night of the Demons and Witch Trap. And then we have Without Warning, Women's Prison Massacre, uh, and the double feature of X-Ray and Schizoid, You'll Like My Mother, and lastly we have Zombie High.
All right guys, so now you've seen all of my non-slipcover editions as well as my box sets and steelbooks of my Screen Factory. So I'm gonna go ahead and dive into my slipcover editions. So this not only includes the collector's edition titles, but just some of the various releases they've done that have included slipcovers, um, including IFC Midnight titles. And uh, I'll just go ahead and dive in. First up is uh, 10 to Midnight with Charles Bronson. A very enjoyable film. I just watched this one a couple weeks ago. And Charles Bronson is just a, a blast to watch on screen. And then we have 68 Kill, um, Alien Outpost, Ambition, Animal, April Fool's Day, um, really fun slasher, very untraditional in its storytelling. I really like it. Army of Darkness, absolute classic. Uh, probably my least favorite of the original Evil Dead films. Uh, but it's really campy, it's really fun. If you just want to turn your brain off for a couple hours, then this is a, a great way to do it. Then we have Army of Frankensteins, and we have John Carpenter's Assault on Precinct 13. Uh, the Autopsy of Jane Doe, uh, probably one of my favorite modern horror films. It, it is somewhat predictable, but just the atmosphere and the dread throughout the film, I just, I really, really like this one. Uh, another one of my favorite uh, modern horror films, and that's The Babadook. I know that this one uh, is kind of divisive. Uh, there's some people that really like it, and then there's some people that just absolutely hate it. But for me, I'm one of the people that just really loved it, and just a very enjoyable horror film. We have Backcountry. This is a good little creature feature. I uh, enjoyed this one quite a bit. We have Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon. This is just a really fun mockumentary where you, you literally go behind the mask and you follow a serial killer around and see how he makes his kills. It's really funny, really gory, just a, a fun time. Uh, beneath. Uh, and then we have John Carpenter's Big Trouble in Little China. Uh, I will admit this one's not my favorite John Carpenter film. It's really wacky, kind of out there. Not, not totally in my wheelhouse, but I'll definitely watch it again one day. Uh, we have Bite. Black Christmas, which this film is right up there with Halloween and Suspiria for me. Probably top five horror films of all time. Absolute classic. Love this slasher. If you guys haven't seen it, pick it up right now. This Scream Factory release is great. Then we have the remake of The Blob, which I, I, I enjoyed the Steve McQueen original, but I think I enjoy this one more. This is how you should do a remake. You know, you take the concept and you kind of bend it and make it your own, and this film did that perfectly. We have Blood Sucking Bastards, then we have Body Bags, an anthology film, The Boy, Bubba Hotep with Bruce Campbell, this one's definitely a fun time, The Burning. Now besides the main, besides the main franchises, I think that this may be my absolute favorite slasher film. It's between this and Black Christmas, but I, I really, really love The Burning. It's a great, great slasher. If you guys haven't seen it, watch it right now. Uh, then we have Camp Coldbrook. That's one I picked up just about a week or two ago. Then we have Candyman, which we all know is an absolute classic. Great film. Then we have Carnage Park. Uh, another one of my absolute favorites. I know I keep saying this, but uh, Carrie from Brian De Palma. Brian De Palma is one of my favorite directors, and this is just a fantastic film. Cat People, I enjoyed this one quite a bit. I haven't seen the original yet, but I enjoyed this one. Another classic, guys, we got Child's Play. I loved this one when I was a kid. I, I probably shouldn't have watched it when I was a kid, but I've always loved this film, and I, I actually like the remake quite a bit as well. Class of 1984, another really fun film. Uh, definitely recommend this one. And then we have The Clove Hitch Killer. This is an underrated modern horror film. I really like this one. Uh, next up we have Stallone in Cobra. Cockneys vs. Zombies. The Craft, a great 90s horror film. A great witch movie. I like that one a lot. The Cured. The Curse of the Werewolf. I just watched this one the other night. Very enjoyable werewolf film. Jean-Claude Van Damme in Cyborg. And then we have Dark Hall and A Dark Song. And we have Dark Summer. Um, and then I have Dark Man. 
usually not the kind of film that I enjoy, but uh, this one's enjoyable. A little, little bit different than a lot of the stuff you'll find on the Screen Factory line, but uh, enjoyable early Sam Raimi film. And then we have the remake of Dawn of the Dead. One of my favorite remakes. Of course the original is a classic, but this one, it, it's a heck of a lot of fun. I remember back when it came out, I was far too young to be seeing it. And me and my friend went with his mom and we just, we had a blast. Great memories with this one. And then we have George A. Romero's Day of the Dead. Fantastic sequel to Dawn of the Dead. Love that film. And then we have David Cronenberg's Dead Ringers. This is one of his more underrated films. I don't I don't hear people talk about this one as much when they when they talk about David Cronenberg. Uh, but this is a this is a good good film. It features a, a fantastic performance from Jeremy Irons. I don't think he gets enough credit for that performance. And then we have The Dead Room and Dead Shadows, Dead Souls, Deadly Blessing, an underrated Wes Craven film, um, and then Deep in the Darkness. And then we have Death Becomes Her from Robert Zemeckis. Classic uh, comedy with, you know, some good good horror elements to it. It's definitely not a horror film, but very, very enjoyable. I mean, look at that cast. How can you go wrong? And then we have Desolation, The Devil's Dolls, Devil's Gate, Dog Soldiers. As far as the film goes, it's a really great uh, werewolf film. The, the transfer left a lot to be desired. I hope that Screen Factory will go back and redo this one at some point. Dolls. This is a classic Stuart Gordon film. I, I really like the killer doll genre, not gonna lie, but this one, one of the best. It's very, very fun. Don't Knock Twice. This is a, a great indie horror film. I like this one quite a lot. It has uh, Lucy Boynton in it, who is also in uh, Sing Street, The Black Coat's Daughter. really like her. And then we have Dracula, and then Dracula, Prince of Darkness. Really enjoy this one. One of my favorite Dracula films. And then we have the Sam Raimi film, Drag Me to Hell. I enjoy this one. It's it's out there, it's very different, but I, I enjoy this one. Dreamscape, The Editor, which I will admit I haven't watched yet. And this is probably one of the very first Scrape Factory titles I picked up. I, don't know why I haven't gotten around to it. We have Elizabeth Harvest. Heard some good things about this one. The Entity. I was really excited when Screen Factory released this one. John Carpenter classic Escape from New York. Looking forward to Escape from LA pretty soon here. Then we have Exorcist to the Heretic. Uh, never seen this one. I haven't really heard very many good things about this, but you know, I, I buy all the, the collector's editions, so I have to pick that one up. Now this one I actually have heard a lot of good things about. I haven't watched it yet, but it's The Exorcist 3. And then we have Extraterrestrial. We have Fender Bender. Pretty fun little slasher. And then we have Feral. We've got Firestarter. I uh, really enjoyed this film. I like uh, Drew Barrymore back in the day. She was really, really kind of adorable. And I like the Tangerine Dream soundtrack quite a bit. I really like um, movies about telekinetic horror. And John Carpenter's classic, The Fog, and there's not much I can say about this film that hasn't already been said. It's a fantastic film. And we got Frankenstein Created Woman, From Beyond, fantastic Stuart Gordon film. I love H.P. Lovecraft's tales. Uh, then we have The Fun House, underrated Toby Huber film. I like that one quite a bit. This one I've never seen. Uh, heard mixed things about it. It's the Garbage Pail Kids movie. And we have Ghost Stories. We've got Ginger Snaps, that's a classic, and Gravy. We have Eli Ross, The Green Inferno, probably not one I would have picked for Screen Factory to release, but hey, we got it anyways. Uh, the Hollow, uh, the original edition of Halloween 2, which is of course like the original Screen Factory release. And again, I just absolutely love this film. And then we have Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. The Harvest. I really like Michael Shannon quite a lot. Probably one of my favorite Scream Factor releases right here, Hell Night. I, I wanted to see this movie for the longest time, but it was really hard to find the VHS or the DVD. Um, and I love Linda Blair, but they finally released it and I enjoy it quite a lot. Hellions. House on Haunted Hill. This is the remake. Uh, but yeah, I think this one's really enjoyable. 
house on Willow Street. The house that Jack built. I really like Lars von Trier. I know that he's pretty divisive as well. Um, and he's got very disturbing films, but for some reason I, I like really disturbing films. So <laughs> I enjoyed this one quite a bit. Then we have The Howling. It's a classic. Ah, this one. <laughs> We've got The Human Centipede, The Complete Sequence. This is all three Human Centipede films. I I don't know if I will ever watch these. Let me know if you guys think I should. Yeah, I just, I don't know if those are ones I'll ever get around to. I Am Fear, I'll Take Your Dead. In the Mouth of Madness, a uh, really underrated John Carpenter film. Uh, I love Sam Neill in horror. He's just great. Invasion of the Body Snatchers, which is a classic that took me far too long to see, but thanks to Scream Factory, I got to see it. And I, I just, I really love this film. Next up, we've got Itsy Bitsy. I truly, truly hate spiders. In fact, I don't even really like holding this case. <laughs> so we'll see if I get around to watching that one. Um, Jackals, Jeepers Creepers. Jeepers Creepers 2, eh, not, not as good. John Carpenter's Vampires, probably one of my uh, lesser favorites from John Carpenter, but still good nonetheless. Uh, then we have Kaleidoscope, Lake Placid, which we all know is a fun classic. Uh, Land of the Dead, one of the lesser George Romero of the dead films. The Lawnmower Man, I think this one is quite a bit of fun. The Lesson. Life Force. And we have Clive Barker's Lord of Illusions. This is one of the Clive Barker films I've yet to see. Low Life. Uh, Mad Max. I, I'll say I really, really enjoy Mad Max Fury Road. This one I've only seen the one time. I thought it was pretty slow. Um, I definitely need to go back and watch it again though because it's a classic in its own right. Next up we've got Manhunter. This is probably one of my favorites, if not my favorite, uh, Michael Mann film. I just really love this take on Hannibal Lecter. And we've got Mermaid, Lake of the Dead. Looks like a pretty cool one. Um, we have The Midnight Man, Misery, which we all know is an absolute classic. Um, funny story, I've been reading the book for like two years now, I think. I just never make time to read and uh, maybe I'll finish it one day, but it, it is a good book. Great film, of course. Um, and then we have The Monkey's Paw, um, Motel Hell, this one's really fun. Another great slasher, My Bloody Valentine, really happy that Screen Factory gave this one a proper release. Uh, then we have Narcopolis, another really fun one, Night of the Comet, just has that classic 80s feel, just a, a film that you could pick up anytime and watch, really like that one. And we have Night of the Creeps, I also have the alternative slipcover, which I uh, display up there. Uh, but this is a classic film with Tom Atkins. Really like this one. And like I said earlier, Night of the Demons, one of my absolute favorite films and one of my favorite Scream Factory releases. I think this was the last slipcover that I needed when I was really getting into collecting the collector's edition. So I was really happy to find that one. Uh, next up we have Nightbreed. This is just the standard edition with slipcover. And then we have Ninja 3, The Domination. Then we have Brian De Palma's Obsession, which I will admit it's not one of his best films, but even, you know, low tier Brian De Palma is better than most movies, in my opinion, at least. Uh, Over Your Dead Body. And then we have the Paul Nashi collection. These are really cool collections. I'll read off real quick what's on this set. Uh, we have Horror Rises from the Tomb, Human Beasts, Vengeance of the Zombies, Night of the Werewolf and Blue Eyes of the Broken Doll. So yeah, that's the Paul Nashi collection. Then I also have the Paul Nashi collection 2. Um, and this one includes Hunchback of the Morgue, Exorcism, A Dragonfly for Each Corpse, The Werewolf and the Yeti, and The Devil's Possessed. So yeah, those are a couple really cool sets from Scream Factory. Uh, then we have The People Under the Stairs from Wes Craven. This was an early one that I picked up. Really enjoyable film, like this one a lot. Uh, and we have Pet Cemetery 2. This one came out not too long ago. I watched it. I had pretty low expectations going in, but I, I have to say I was really pleasantly surprised. It's not as good as the first film, uh, but yeah, definitely enjoyable, definitely worth checking out. And then we have Phantasm 2. 
Uh, I haven't seen this one yet. I've seen the original one only. I do have the box set from Wellgo, so I'm gonna have to have a Phantasm marathon one day. Uh, Phantom of the Paradise, another great Brian De Palma film. On paper, this didn't really sound like one I would enjoy a lot, but I was blown away by this one. It's just tons of fun. Great film. Uh, and then we have the Poison Ivy collection. I haven't seen any of these yet. Uh, definitely looking forward to those. Uh, the Poltergeist 2, The Other Side. And then I also have Poltergeist 3. Uh, this one was just one of my absolute favorite films of all time. This is John Carpenter's Prince of Darkness. The atmosphere of this film is just absolutely terrifying. I don't know why, but this film just it's just one of my absolute favorites. And if Halloween wasn't as great as it was, I would definitely say this is my favorite John Carpenter. And then we have Prison. This was a pretty fun flick. It stars Viggo Mortensen. I like him a lot. Um, and then we have Psycho 2, which Anthony Perkins is in. Uh, this is actually a really good sequel. Nowhere near the caliber of the original film, but just a really solid sequel. Very fun to watch. Very fun to see Norman Bates in the role again. And while this one isn't as good as the second one, this one's still very entertaining, and that's Psycho 3. Definitely still worth a look. Uh, then next up we have the Lance Henrik Henriksen classic Pumpkinhead. Then we have Pie Wacket. Then we have David Cronenberg's Rabid. Really like this film. Uh, really creepy, like virus zombie film. And then this is the Soska Sisters remake of Rabid. Haven't had a chance to watch that one yet. I've heard kind of some mixed things about that. Next up, we have Radio Flash. Uh, another Brian De Palma film. I have to praise Screen Factory for how many of his films they've released, but uh, Raising Cain. And this has a fantastic performance from John Lithgow, uh, just probably one of his career best. I really, really enjoyed this film. Then we have The Return of the Living Dead, another absolute classic. Really love this film. Probably one of my favorite zombie films. And then we have Return of the Living Dead Part 2. Definitely a downgrade compared to the first film, uh, but this one still has its moments, still enjoyable. Uh, next up, we have Road Games, starring Stacey Keach and Jamie Lee Curtis. This one's really more of a thriller than a horror, um, but I, I definitely like this one. It's an interesting film. And then we have Robocop 2. Uh, the first Robocop, one of my favorite films of all time. I'm really happy I have the Arrow video release of that. Uh, but this one, it, it of course doesn't hold a candle to the original. But it's a very solid sequel, one that I very much enjoy, similar to how I enjoy Psycho 2 compared to the original. Just a really fun one to watch. I still haven't gotten around to watching this one, which I really need to, and that is Robocop 3. And then we have Rust Creek. Next up, this one is just, uh, well, what else can I say besides classic? But this is a Serial Mom with Kathleen Turner from John Waters. Really love this film. When I saw it, I didn't really know what I was in for, but I was pleasantly surprised. It's a great dark comedy, lots of funny moments. I enjoy this one quite a bit. And then we have Wes Craven's The Serpent and the Rainbow. This is a Wes Craven film uh, that I unfortunately haven't seen yet, but looking forward to checking that one out. Then we have Wes Craven's Shocker. This was a pretty early release. I remember picking this up on release day. Uh, a pretty early pickup for me from Screen Factory. Enjoyed this film quite a bit. It's an underrated Wes Craven film for sure. And then we have Silent Hill, which I had gone all these years without seeing. Picked up the Screen Factory release and decided to check it out. You know, uh, video game adaptations tend to not be the greatest, but I think that this one was really pretty cool. The atmosphere was really creepy. The setting, I just, I, I liked it quite a bit. You know, obviously not like a great film by any means, but very enjoyable, very fun. Really cool effects in that one too. And then Silent Night, Deadly Night, really love this film. Uh, you know, when Santa becomes the killer, great slasher. Um, and then we have Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2, which I am happy that they released. Unfortunately, this film is kind of a rehash of the original. It has a few scenes that are kind of fun. Uh, I know Andrew is working on an edit that combined the two. You know, just take all the flashbacks out and, uh, and whatnot, so... I'll we'll have to see if you post that one day, but this is a pretty fun film. And then we have Silver Bullet, fantastic Stephen King film. Enjoyed this one quite a lot. 
Slasher Season 1. I, I've been meaning to get into the show. I haven't yet. I, I'm pretty sure, I think Netflix picked up the next season or two. Uh, definitely going to have to sit down and give this a watch one day. Then we have Stephen King's Sleepwalkers. Like I've said multiple times in this video, I love horror films with cats. Uh, and this one is no exception. I enjoy this one quite a lot. I have the poster hanging in my living room. This is just a super fun film. I like this one quite a bit. And then we have Sleepaway Camp. You guys know this is a great slasher, one of the best. Uh, just a really fun time. Uh, and then I also have Sleepaway Camp 2, which is quite a bit different in tone compared to the first one. Uh, the character of Angela is really different in this film. Um, nowhere near as good as the first one, but entertaining in its own way. And I don't think I've ever seen the third one, but I do own the third one. Sleepaway Camp 3 Teenage Wasteland. And then next up we have Slither. This is of course from James Gunn. A uh, more recent film for Screen Factory. This, this movie is a blast. Absolutely love this one. And then we have Species, which I've seen. This one's okay. I, it's not my favorite. It's a pretty cool sci-fi flick though. Uh, then we have Squirm. Fun creepy crawler film. Then we have John Carpenter's Starman. I have never seen this one, but I've heard it's one of his more underrated films, so looking forward to that one. And then we have The Stranger. This is presented by Eli Roth. I don't believe it's directed by him, though. The Strangers, which is a really creepy home invasion film. I remember watching it and thinking, gosh, I hope something like this never happens to me because that is probably one of my actual fears. Uh, but really good home invasion film. Uh, the sequel, much more of a slasher, but I enjoy that one as well. Uh, we have Stung. Haven't seen this one yet. I know a lot of people have been watching this since they brought up the murder hornets in the news recently. So I'll have to give that one a watch. And then we have Submerged. Uh, Tales from the Crypt presents Bordello of Blood. It was a huge blind spot for me. I gotta, gotta give these ones a watch. And of course I also have Demon Knight. And Tales from the Hood classic anthology film, lots of fun. Almost there guys, almost at the end. Um, and then next up we have Teen Wolf, not really a horror film, but it's a classic 80s film in its own right. Definitely enjoy this one. And then we have Teen Wolf 2, which changes over to Jason Bateman. I haven't seen this one yet, but definitely need to watch it soon. Then we have Terror Train, another classic Jamie Lee Curtis screen queen film. Enjoy this one quite a bit. It's really claustrophobic watching a slasher film that takes place entirely on a train. Then we have Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 2. This obviously completely different in tone compared to the original, uh, but pretty enjoyable, really fun flick. This one I have never seen, heard pretty much all bad things about it, and that is Texas Chainsaw Massacre The Next Generation. I've heard Matthew McConaughey and Renee Zellweger are pretty over the top and crazy in this one. And I think they would probably rather forget that they were even in this film. Uh, definitely gonna have to give this one a watch soon. And then we have They Live with the buy sticker. Pretty awesome. Of course, I like this film. I'm wearing my They Live tee today. A great John Carpenter film. Different than his other films, but really enjoyable. Dystopian world that is just very relevant even today. And then we have The Thing. I think I own like four copies of this movie. Like I said earlier, absolute classic. Uh, Toolbox Murders 2. We have Trespassers. We have Trick or Treat. Probably my favorite film to watch on Halloween besides Halloween. I always watch Halloween and I always watch Trick or Treat on Halloween night. A great anthology film and I love the way they tie all the stories together in the end. Just a great great movie. And then I have the Universal Horror Collection Volume 1. I have been pretty pretty behind on picking these up. I, I think they're up to like collection four or five now. Definitely gonna have to catch up on these. They're super cool sets. This one has The Black Cat, The Raven, The Invisible Ray, and Black Friday. So yeah, definitely need to catch up on these. Final stack here. We have Urban Legend, another fantastic early 2000s uh, slasher, kind of a whodunit film, very enjoyable. Watched this one for the first time just a few years ago and, and liked it quite a bit. Another early 2000s slasher and that's Valentine. This one is not the best slasher ever but again it's just really fun. 
you got young Katherine Heigl in it. Very enjoyable. And then we have Vice Squad. Watched this one a little bit ago. Enjoyed this one quite a bit. I like the gritty crime films from this era. They're very enjoyable. And then we have uh, John Carpenter's Village of the Damned. Another one that I have yet to see. Gotta check this one out. I haven't heard much about it, to be honest. Uh, we have the Vincent Price Collection 2. I really wish I had the first one, but as you guys all know, it's super out of print. And I believe these are going out of print now too. Uh, but love Vincent Price. This set includes The Raven, The Last Man on Earth, The Comedy of Terrors, Dr. Fives Rises Again, The Tomb of Ligeia, The Return of the Fly, and of course, House on Haunted Hill. And then I just recently picked this one up. This is the Vincent Price Collection 3. Hopefully that's not glaring too bad with the shrink wrap still on it. This one has Master of the World, An Evening of Edgar Allan Poe, Tower of London, Cry of the Banshee, and Diary of a Madman. I hope one day I can pick up the original collection or Screen Factory regains the rights again. Next up we have Wildling. Really like Belle Powley. She's a really underrated actress right now. Then we have The Wind, Demons of the Prairie. This is a really creepy film. A uh, really good period piece for Wormwood Road of the Dead. And then lastly, we have Zombie Fight Club. I just want to say thank you guys so much for sticking out through this video. I know it was super long. Um, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell to hear when we upload new videos. Please let us know what videos you'd like to see. If there's any other labels you guys would like to see me highlight like this, please let us know. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you later.